Look at the dinosaur in the window.
Yeah. It's all gone. May the froggy come out. Nice job. Do you want to look in there? You don't want to do it now? I want to do it. She got it the first time, but. Whoa. There's the uh, cool. Thank you. Have you guys done many spells today so far? Yeah. Done some? Oh, yeah. But don't forget, uh, did we just get the wand today? Or did we bring it back? Just got it today. Just today? So Your first roller coaster ride. Was that fun? Was it scary? Yeah. A little take... bit scary. We need ice cream to hold. Say? I was scared because it was my first time. But was it fun? Yeah. You're scared still or no? Now you like it, don't you? I ice cream a little bit. That's okay. I ice cream a little Well, we are leaving uh, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter right now. It was our first uh, stop today. We had a fantastic time here. Lillian went on her first roller coaster ride. Um, we got the wands. We went to Ollivander's wand shop and she cast several magic spells. We had some butter beer. And we're probably gonna be back later today. But now we're gonna go check out the Simpsons. So the race is really easy guys, all you need to do is hold down to both buttons. Do not let go of those buttons. Leave your one or two target. And the first one that reaches the finish line is the winner. Alrighty guys, get ready, get ready. Here we go, here we go. The race will begin in three, two, one, go! Alright guys, hold the water on the target, hold the water on the target. Nice and steady, nice and steady on the target, on the hole. There you go, right there. On the hole, on the hole. Keep it up, guys. Keep it up. We're almost there to the end, guys. We're so close. And the winner, number five. Good job. Good job.
job, Lillian. Good that was job. a great race, guys. The rest of you are so close. Yeah, we can get it on. Right. Thank you. You want to get a donut? That's what Homer eats is donuts. See, look, he eats donuts. He should get him one too, Lillian. After meeting Homer Simpson, Lillian just had to have this big pink donut. And now she's going to eat it. Presenting her neck if you want, you can pet her now. Two fingers under her neck like that. I don't want to. You don't want to? You're very smart. She is a meat eater. <laughs> very, very brave. We are waiting in line to meet a raptor. You want to meet the dinosaur? Program. We're studying how our dinosaurs respond in proximity to guests. You guys are about to meet one of our favorite velociraptors, Blue, who's known for her increased intelligence and heightened empathy towards guests. That does help to socially acclimate her. <laughs> Folks, this, this is the opportunity of a lifetime. You guys are going to come face to face with a living, breathing dinosaur. But remember, this is a wild animal, so please, no sudden movements. Do not approach the dinosaur unless instructed to do so. If you guys follow all of our rules, pay attention to our vet text as well as myself. Everybody will be here. She's sounding a little wound up. She must be excited to see everyone. We're going to bring her out now. Vet text, let's open the gates. Everyone remain calm. Eyes on me. Blue. Hole. Eyes on me. Blue. Hey. That's more like. Okay, calm down. Eyes on me. We're moving. Hold. Good. So if, if she gets vocal, so what she's doing there is trying to test the perimeter. Don't move. Put your hands straight out to the side. That'll show her that you're brave. You see that? She's nurturing our younger guest already. She got super low. That's a very good sign. Let's document that, Beth Tex. I like how adaptive she's being at the moment. Very good adaptive behavior. Although now she's checking that perimeter again, especially with the young guest here. She likes you. 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 She likes
Well, when in Jurassic Park, you have to try uh, the island drinks. I have the tiki Thai right here. My husband has a bird of paradise. They both come in these very cool cups. And you can get a refill in these cups too uh, at a discount. We're going to try, actually we've already tried these and they are both delicious. And now we're going to sit and enjoy a break uh, while our daughter takes an effort. Jurassic World. We had our raptor encounter, which was really awesome, and um, Lillian played in the dino play area, which is a very cool play area. So now we're headed to the studio tour. We're going on the studio tour. You're telling me you gotta walk fast. You gotta walk fast, you gotta walk fast. We're gonna 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 walk fast. We're Wow, you guys are awesome. So before we head out, we got to make sure everybody has a pair of like into the heart of the studio. And as we do that, go ahead and look on either side of the tram. You're seeing just a few of the thousands of movies we've made are right here on our lot. Now back in right this very moment. Now we are not just our very own city. We are in fact a one-stop shop for production companies, which means any production company can come in here. They can start massive, iconic Hollywood sets. You actually might recognize some of these sets, starting with Frankenstein's Laboratory, Dracula's Castle, Star Stores in the break room, stock room, dressing rooms. Now stage 21. Now stage 21 was also used in Jurassic Park when the kids are sitting in the trees, the dinosaur sneezes on them. Stage 21. In the year 2000 for Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the entire mountaintop lair for the Grinch was inside of stage 21. We've also had the Mission Control Center in there for the Apollo 13. Mission bungalows are production offices, but they were not always offices. These did used to be Jurassic rooms to some of those famous stars on our lot. Doris Day, Jimmy Stewart, Lucille Ball, they were all right here. Now they are our offices, and we do have a company out here. It is Illumination Entertainment. Now they brought us the entire Despicable Me franchise. Secret Life of Pets 1 and 2, now in theaters. Check it out. Sing and the brand new Grinch film starring Benedict Cumberbatch. Now the Despicable Me franchise alone is responsible for two out of the six Universal films of all time to have made a billion dollars. That is Despicable Me, 3, and The Minions. Now Elizabeth Banks has her very own production office out here, and she has brought us the entire Pitch Perfect franchise starring Anna Kendrick and Skylar Astin. Now my absolute favorite bungalow on the lot is Bungalow 5195. On your left hand side, this is late Alfred Hitchcock's bungalow. He has brought us Rear Window, The Birds, and Psycho. It is no longer his bungalow, it is now home of the De Laurentiis Company, and they have brought us most of the entire Hannibal Lecter franchise. That is what we call Brownstone Street. You might recognize Brownstone Street. Check it out. Baltimore behind because it is time to take you all the way back to the future. Welcome to Hill Valley. Now guys, look at your screens. Look at that clock tower on your screens. Now look at the clock tower to your left. It's different. Okay, it is different. So what happened was we had filmmakers coming in here telling us it was way too recognizable and a little bit distracting for their own audiences. So we actually placed a facade in front of the clock tower. So that brick wall that you're seeing right now and the city hall archway, if you take those down, we still have the clock tower set standing right now. And you can actually even see the set right this very moment because the doors are wide open. If you look inside the doorway, those columns, that's the clock tower. Kit car, followed by is the Magnum PI Ferrari. That is just a Volkswagen engine with a Ferrari fiberglass shell for an adopted. And then we have our Back to the Future cars. That Lifestar Pulse did not actually fly. <laughs> now the full in stones vehicles, they are not foot powered, but they do have motors to get them all around the sets. 
Now the fast and furious cars are actually not quite fast or furious. They only go up to about 40 miles an hour on set during filming due to safety. Now the Jurassic World Gyrosphere, you might remember it having glass, but actually never ever had glass. It was all just CGI because reflection of the camera. Now this tank on your left hand side from the Transformers films is made completely out of plywood. It's just painted to look like metal because it's a lot easier to move from set to set and location to location. Inside the tram, there, there are dinosaurs. Okay, okay, get ready because the first ones you're gonna see today will be on your left hand side. Get ready, here they are. Um, that was, that was awkward. Um, there's more. Okay. <clears throat> here they, oh. <laughs> Uh oh, <laughs> um, there's, where, where are the dinosaurs? We don't know. Okay. <laughs> um, well, in the meantime, go ahead and take a look around you, that mobile lab on your left. That was from Jurassic Park, The Lost World. Now, I think we're just gonna, oh, no, no, I hear something. Look out, look out, look out! <laughs> Sorry about that guys. Now as long as you did not get wet, you should be okay, but if you did get sprayed, we're not gonna talk about that. Now go place all on our sets playing that thunder you hear right now. Now normally it would not be played during filming, it would only be edited afterwards in post-production because it would sound a lot better, get the lines of the actors. Now on your left, we're gonna make it rain in three, two, and one. There it goes, and that water is being shot up into the sky using overhead sprinklers that are placed all around our sets. It's being shot up and being brought back down using a trick in Hollywood we call gravity. Now these raindrops are about four times as large as real raindrops, but they show up on camera a lot better and they're a little bit more dramatic. Rain. Woo. Oh, great, okay, cool. <laughs> um, Helen, hi, oh, we can cut the rain. Wait. What? No, uh, Helen, uh, Helen, cut the rain. What? The water. Uh-oh. Oh no, it's happening. It's happening. It happened. Good luck! Oh, oh. That right there was thousands of gallons of water dropped from the top of the hill and brought back up in one minute. That effect can be seen in Big Fat Liar starring Amanda Bynes and Frankie Muniz. It can also be seen in Lady Gaga's music video, Judas. no water. I just did not want to get wet. <laughs> Sorry. Congratulations. You guys just survived the earthquake of the big one. Um, the beach is still closed. Are we still going Okay. Um, okay, so Amity Island was close earlier because there was a shark, but on your right hand side, see he's no longer a threat to us. So we're good. We're gonna pull in there right now. Now we do have some police divers out there making sure the waters are still clear. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy the beautiful. Uh oh. Uh -oh. That's a shark. Uh -oh. 
to George because hopefully our police driver George is not. St oh no, there he is at George. Buddy, there's a shark. No, no, George, look out! No, George! Oh no, no! Well, that's what happens when you're curious, George. Oh wow! All right, well, Doozy and I are trained professionals with hours of experience. So remain calm, remain seated, and we might get out of here safely. Now, as long as the shark doesn't do that. <laughs> Good luck might just know it as Wisteria Lane from ABC's Desperate Housewives. It is currently right now closed for Mindy Kaling's brand new television show that is coming called Never Have I Ever. It's to the left of the Christmas tree with the candy cane right next to it. That is Martha May's house. You can get a great shot of it right there up on your screens. Now this is one of the largest productions to film on our lot using 11 of our 28 sound stages, which is a lot. Now one sound stage was just to get the who's in makeup, costume, and hair. We even used nine American football fields worth of fake snow. That's psycho. Now take a look at these sets, these iconic Hollywood sets. Get out your cameras. We're going to do a little bit of a picture stop for you guys right now. Now just past that hill right there, you will see the original Psycho house. Now these sets were all constructed. Um, is that? Oh no. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that, that, is, that is Norman Bates. Um, it's okay. Do we make up? We're good. He's he's going inside. Okay, we're fine. We're gonna we're gonna go. Yeah. Um, I don't know why he's out here right now, but that's okay. Um, we're just. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. 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 Um, okay, guys, be very quiet. You can not know we're here. We have to get out of here very quickly. So just do not say anything. Oh no. He sees us. Doozy, go. 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 Now we are going to pass the psycho house on your left hand side. You might be able to see a familiar face on the second floor. Who knows? Now as we head around the psycho house, we are heading to one of the largest destruction sets to ever be on our lawn. From Steven Spielberg's War of the Worlds, this is the airplane crash site set. Now that airplane you're seeing on your left hand side, that's a real 747 Boeing airplane. It was purchased and destroyed specifically just for this production. Now it was purchased from the Mojave Plane Graveyard for about $60,000, which is not a bad deal, but just to bring the plane here by truck, it was $200,000 to literally just bring it here from the Mojave Desert. I mean, talk about shipping and handling. It's just great. The studio tour was fantastic. We had so much fun. And now we are at a Moe's Tavern and Krusty Burger, and uh, Steve and Lillian got a burger and some chicken. And I went over to um, one of the Mexican places and got some chips and guac and uh, queso and a cheese quesadilla. Honey. 
Thank you, Lucy. Thank you. Very cute. Thank you. Thank you. Right here, Shrek. Bye. 